Great to have you with us. Now, we'll soon be taking you to Jubilee House, where President Ekufado is expected to present the constitutional instrument for the Bunu East region shortly. That ceremony is ongoing. But before we do that, Deputy Minister for Information, Pius Enam Hajide says he does not recall President Ekufado ever promising to name Nkuranza as the regional capital of the newly created Bono East region. He's also been condemning the violence at Salaga after Damongo was named regional capital for the newly created Savannah region. Firstly, we need to express our disappointment at what happened uh, with the youth of Salaga. Uh, recall that the leadership of Salaga, political, religious, traditional, were all here in Accra for the presentation of the CI and so the youth uh, got out of hand. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that extensive consultations uh, and discussions were held by the committee headed by the able uh, uh, minister for regional reorganization. And uh, every, all the communities that have sought to host the capital uh, are qualified in their own rights. But at the end of the day, we must all agree that it is only one out of the several uh, qualified uh, communities or districts or towns that will be able to host the regional capital. What is important is our commitment, this government's commitment uh, to shift in the development paradigm that we have operated over the years. And that is why uh, His Excellency the President has announced a 20 million uh, seed money for the startup of these new regions. This 20 million is not an investment in the regional capitals per se. This 20 million is an investment in the new regions, uh, the entire geographic space. Your, your party's um, office in, in Salaga was burnt. Um, how, is, how is the party doing and how are your reps there uh, faring after this has happened? Well, we are still estimating the cost. Uh, I am told that our party uh, operatives, some of whom were in the office at the time, are quite traumatized. And you can you can you can understand that people were in the office, and the office was was set ablaze. And so they are traumatized at this point. Uh, my view is that this is a criminal matter, and uh, it must be dealt with uh, by the police, and that the perpetrators uh, ought to be brought to book uh, to serve as a deterrent to anybody who may be. Uh, comprehend or contemplating uh, any any such moves. On Monday, the youth of Nkranza demonstrated. Now, they claim that the president promised them that Nkranza will be named the capital of the Bono East region. Do you recall at any point in time the president made such a promise? No, I do not recall. And uh, since uh, I, it was brought to my attention that the people of Nkranza have made that comment, so I've been reviewing the files. I was uh, deeply involved in the campaign. I was aide to then flag bearer, now president. Pastor Namhaji did the Deputy Information Minister. Let's take you now to Jubilee House, where President Ekufuado is set to make that historic announcement. Eminent clergy, Vice President, Chairperson and members of the Council of State, Chief of Staff of the Office of the President, Senior Minister, Minister for Regional Reorganization and Development, Minister for Chieftaincy and Religious Affairs, the Attorney General, Ministers and, and no, the Brongahafu Regional Minister and his Deputy, Ministers and Deputy Ministers of State, Members of Parliament, the chairperson and members of the Bruby Commission, the president of the Bronga House of Regional House of Chiefs, your Mahini of Yeji, traditional area, Pima Pim Yao Cabrese the fifth, Amahi, Amahima, Nananum, elders and members of the delegation from Bronga East Region, the chairperson and executives of the Middle Belt Development Authority, fellow Ghanaians, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome all of you warmly to Jubilee House, the seat of our nation's presidency. Today is a happy day for the people of the newly created Brung East region. And I'm happy 
that years of agitation for the creation of this region, which yielded no results, have come to an end. And hopefully, that a new era of progress and prosperity has dawned for the people of the region. For an enclave which is ethnically diverse, representing about two-thirds of the entire landmass of the then Brongahafu region, and whose predominant ag activity is agriculture, Bruno East, with significant deposits of natural resources, should have been one of the most developed parts of our country. Unfortunately, it is not. After receiving a petition from 14 chiefs from traditional areas within the municipalities and districts of the proposed Bronx East region for the creation of the region. I referred, in accordance with the dictates of the Constitution of the Republic, in Article 52A, on 26 June 2017, the petition to the Council of State for its advice. And on 15th August 2017, the Council advised that a commission of inquiry be established to determine whether or not there was a need and substantial demand for the creation of the proposed Bruno East region. During the public hearings conducted by the nine-member Brobe Commission, headed by the eminent jurist, the retired Justice of the Supreme Court, Mr. Justice S.A. Brobe, the persons who appeared outlined a wide range of issues from access to government and public services, access to educational and healthcare infrastructure, the equitable distribution of statutory funds and development projects, and the creation of growth poles using agriculture as a catalyst for growth and industrialization, as some of the reasons for the demand for the creation of the new region. Indeed, out of the 10,109 participants and the six public hearings conducted in the proposed rural East region, there was not a single dissenting voice. When the time came for the constitutional threshold to be met in the 27 December 2018 referendum, 99.5% out of the 85.82% of the electorate who turned out to vote voted yes. <laughs> Residents of Atebubu, Amanteng, Kentampo, in Kuranza, Peru, Sene, and Tetima could not have conveyed their determination for the region in a much clearer voice. Nananum, I can assure that this government, which facilitated the creation of the region in compliance with the provisions of the Constitution, will help ensure the, safe, the smooth takeoff and development of the East. Many of the reasons alluded to as the basis for the creation of the new region are not peculiar to Bruno East alone. The creation of the six new regions presents us with the opportunity to serve better the needs of the people from these new regions through the effective and efficient reorganization and distribution of our public services and infrastructure. With the coalition from Bruno East described by the Broby Commission as, quote, one of the most organized, unquote, I appeal to you to support government's efforts in developing the new region. Within one week of the declaration of the results of the referendum, I constituted a seven-member government committee chaired by the dynamic and sagacious minister for regional reorganization and development, the Honorable Dan Boche, MP, with the Minister for Planning, the Honorable Jambafo, MP, the Minister for Local Government and Rural Development, the Honorable Alima Mahama, MP, the Minister for Special Development Initiatives, 
the Honorable Mavis Howard Kumson, MP, the Minister for Finance, Kenu Ferreta, the Minister for National Security, Abel Kandapaya, and the Presidential Advisor, Dr. Kwame Akotufo, as members to plan and oversee the rapid development of Bruno East. In the President's 2019 budget statement, an amount of 20 million CDs has been allocated as seed capital for Bruno East to help in the establishment of the needed infrastructure for the smooth takeoff of the region. I know one of the concerns of the coalition in Bono East had to do with, quote, appointments to government positions and feelings of marginalization. You will thus be glad to know that soon you will have your own minister hailing from Bron East. Until the appointment of a substantive regional minister for Bron East, I have asked the current regional minister for Bron East, for Bron Ahafo, the Honorable Evans Opokubo BMP to act as caretaker minister. <coughs> I'm happy to inform you that Tachiman has been chosen as the capital. I want to assure re residents of the region, however, the government projects and structures will be equitably spread across the region. So, Nananum, ladies and gentlemen, this is the day we begin to write the story of growth and accelerated development of the North East region. This can only happen if we work together and eschew all forms of narrow parochial interest. Our forefathers who fought for our nation's independence with their sweat, toil, and blood envisaged us to be a progressive and prosperous nation. And I'm confident that the development of Bro East will contribute to the making of the great nation of Ghana we all desire. Let us be up and doing. <coughs> Please excuse me. Accordingly, Mr. Vice President and other ladies and gentlemen, I will now present to the head of the delegation the constitutional instrument CI113, giving effect to the results of the referendum of 27 December 2018, as certified by the Electoral Commission in Gazette number 12 of 2019, and thereby creating the Bruno East region, and signed the instrument of attestation to these facts. May God bless Bronx East Region and us all. And may God bless our homeland, Ghana, and make her great and strong. I thank you for your attention. President Ekufadu, they're making that announcement. Notable in his speech is that the capital for the newly created Bono East region will be Techiman. 
This comes after the chiefs and the people of the Nkranza area in the Bono East, newly created Bono East region, have raised agitation that they have been sidelined in the processes leading to the selection of the capital of the region. Of course, they said that they have been sidelined by persons like Dr. Christoph, Professor sorry, uh, Christopher Amiyao Ekufi, former Minister of Education, former Member of Parliament in the Techiman area. And they are saying that they need to be added to the process. Of course, we'll go live to uh, Precious Semevo for him to give us some more background on that. But the Bronga Hafu Minister um, has been appointed as caretaker minister for that region. As I said earlier, Techiman has been chosen as a capital for the region. Also, resources will be shared equitably across the region. That's what President Ekufado said. Let's go to Nkranza now and speak with Precious Semevo. Precious, I'm sure the people of Nkranza have heard this announcement. What's the reaction? Well, they've heard the announcement that because almost everybody is listening to the president speak either on TV or via radio. And it was when the, the moment the president said Kichiman has been chosen, it was a spontaneous uh, reaction of sadness and disappointment. Uh, you could hear it all over the place. It's just like a uh, football match and a goal is scored, how supporters unanimously you know, shout. That is uh, what uh, happened. Now, if you look at the demeanor of uh, people in town, it is that of uh, sadness. Uh, and they are asking uh, the, the rationale behind Petiman being chosen as the regional capital. They believe that in Kuranza, uh, would have served a much better purpose due to its accessibility. But I have a youth uh, leader with me here. Quickly, let's try to uh, engage him and how he feels about this particular announcement. Now, first, tell me your name. My name is Honorable Kupio Henneke. You are a liaison officer for Bono East Creation and a youth leader. All right. So now, Petiman has been named by the president. How do you receive this? Thank you, my brother. My brother, you are an eyewitness to whatever that has transpired. Immediately, the president mentioned Petiman as the new capital for Bono East. In as much as we accept the president's pronouncement, we vehemently disagree with the fact that the plan should be the capital for Bono East. We are not going to protest, but whatever we have is in and within us. In fact, we are sudden. We are much sudden. Why, we, why are we sudden? We are sudden because we are not thinking about ourselves as Nkransa people, but the people that are very far from us, like the KJGs, the Asebubus, and Prime and stuff. How are they going to again travel to the Timan? as their capital. Moving from Sunyane, it's just a 15, 20 minute drive to Techiman. And again, their capital has been situated at Techiman. So, in fact, it is of no work done, actually. If we mean to create a regional, a region, and accessible for that matter, accessibility was the key, and development is the agenda. Please, we have at least choose a place that all the, all the constituencies, all the districts, all the people in the enclave can access the place. All the people in the enclave can at least travel at peace to do whatever they want within a day. Huh? We have repeated what we used to have. Like, a KJG would travel not, not less than 48 hours to assess Sunyani for developmental projects. But let me, let me, let me ask you, uh, would this pronouncement affect the level of cooperation that one would have expected the youth in Nkranza to extend uh, to the development of the entire Bono East? My brother, um, for now... Um, we, 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 will, we will quell into ourselves and know what to do. Actually, we'll have to go all out and talk to our people. I, I did indicate earlier that in as much as we disagree with what we'll the president just pronounced, we, we very much support whatever that has been done because there is nothing we can do anymore. So what, all that we are going to do is that to talk to our people so that we can open up, be accessible, and be ready and cooperate with whatever the president has done so that at least the ultimate goal will be achieved. That is developed. That's all that we are, we are aiming for. Precious. Right, so thank you uh, so much. Yeah, hello. Thank you very much uh, for bringing us that update live from Nkuranza. Now, as you can see, there's jubilation at Flagstaff House, or Jubilee House, I should say, um, over this announcement. But the people of Nkuranza are not happy. Osei Bonsu Collins is the spokesman for the youth in the yet to be created Bono East region. He has joined us on the line, or should I say the newly created Bono East region. Ose Bonsu, what's your reaction to the announcement of Tichiman as the capital? Thank you.
Thank you very much, Dazi. And good afternoon to your viewers. Uh, people of Ukraine, and for that matter, the youth uh, are not happy with the pronouns. We are not happy, not because the president uh, has mentioned the human as the moon is original capital. But we are not happy as that led to the naming of the human as the Bono is original capital. As I indicated in the morning, we have asked our youth to be resolute. We have asked them to be magnanimous in whatever they do. And we have asked them to remain calm and silent. We are not going to displace the president. We are not going to do anything to mar the beauty of the new regime that we have had. But our concern is about the process that led to the selection of the human as the regional capital. What's the specific concern, Collins? The specific concern is that the process was not genuine. There were unseen hands that were manipulating the system, else the human would have been chosen as the regional capital. Which unseen hands? Yes, we have the deputy minister of uh, the ministry that was responsible for the creation of this very region, who was part of the committee mm. that worked for the selection of the regional capital. Mm. And that's why you have a, a, a deputy minister who is from Tejima, and who is also lazy his boots to become a member of parliament, from time to time. And he happens to be part of this committee. Do you think the system will be very fair? But Collins, this is one person in a nine-member committee. How much influence could he wield? That is, the problem that we are talking about is that meetings are even organized and the Vice President Council is not inviting, which they are aware. This like, is last week Thursday. They met all the towns that were preparing for this regional capital. Inclusion was never invited. Inclusion was never invited. So we, we will not disgrace the president. If our president, we love him so much. But what we are saying is that the next time the president will open his eyes very well any time he sets up a committee to do such a thorough work. But for this particular committee, we, the youth of Ukraine, will never forgive them because of their unseen hands and unlevel playing tools that they gave people of Ukraine. It's a raw deal that has been given to us, and we will never forget this committee that work on the capital. Thank you very much, Jose Bonsu Collins. He's a youth leader in the Bono East region, specifically the Nkranza area. Now, related to this story, seven persons have been arrested by the police in the northern region in connection with Tuesday's violence in Salaga that resulted in the burning down of the NPP constituency office and some party billboards. The suspects were picked up in the early hours of Wednesday at Salaga upon intelligence to assist in further investigations. Some youth of the area went on rampage after President Ekufuado announced Damongo as the regional capital of the newly created Savannah region. Police moved in and succeeded in preventing the youth from burning down the district assembly building as well as the DCE's bungalow. DSP Yusuf Tanko, who speaks for the Northern Region Police Command, spoke earlier on News Desk. We have both police and military presence on the ground and we are trying to control the situation. The disturbance have stopped. Uh, as you rightly put it, we've been able to arrest seven persons who we have brought to Somali to assist in investigation. And we are also moving on uh, the names that we have to pick those to also assist in our investigations. We take them based on intelligence that they were part of those who perpetrated the act. But we need to subject that particular intelligence to further prove to be able to establish whether or not uh, they, 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 they were involved. And it is after that probe or further investigation when we will be able to ascertain firmly that uh, they are involved or they are not involved. We have videos, but we don't have the, we don't know the one in your possession. But we are assuring that we will try as much as possible to trace and arrest uh, all those who have been cited in the video. But uh, you, we need to understand that it is not everybody who appeared in the video who was involved. 
And there are many more who didn't appear in the video but are also involved. And we are mindful of all that. Mm. You picked up intelligence that uh, these people were moving to the DC's uh, office and his home, and you were able to avert uh, what could have been a possible uh, disaster. How is uh, the DCE faring now? Uh, the DCE, according to this officer, is doing well, and uh, he's going about his normal uh, business. We understand from the Northern Regional Minister that uh, a RECSEC meeting will be held later today uh, to try and deal with the matter and, see, and, and also see the way forward. But ahead of that, what has police been doing on the ground uh, to ensure calm in Salaga? We have uh, sent men there. We have followed it up with reinforcement. The military have also sent men. They will also uh, follow it up with reinforcement. And we are securing places that we need to secure. Mm. And uh, that is likely to help uh, control the situation uh, further. Now, the Minister for Regional Reorganization, Dan Boche, has condemned these actions by these young people. Now, away from that story, some residents of Ifeokuma, a suburb of Ifeokwesiminti Municipal Assembly in the Western Region, nearly lynched a 35-year-old man this morning for allegedly for alleged kidnapping, pardon me. Now, a woman raised an alarm that the man was kidnapping her two children. An eyewitness recounted the incidents to our correspondent in the region. <laughs> There was a car ahead of us on our way from Fijai. We heard someone screaming, I have been kidnapped. That drew our attention, attracting others along the way to join in. We didn't know whether to call the police or chase the car because everyone was shouting at them. The driver then drove to the police station and we all followed. We want to know if they are indeed kidnapped. The police told us they are a couple. But why did the woman cry out to the public she has been kidnapped? We just want to know. And Natalia joins us live with updates. Ina, is the gentleman still with the police? Yes, Daniel. The okay. gentleman is with the police. Um, they are investigating the issues. Mm. But DSP Olivia Rabnaduku has confirmed that indeed these are um, couples. I think they had a misunderstanding. Okay. So they are investigating this issue. Right. Tell us about the crowd. Are they still gathered there? Are they still uh, speaking as passionately as they were earlier? Daniel, as of now, the crowd has reduced drastically as compared to when we got there this morning. I think the police intervened and then there was also a reinforcement from the central police station to intervene. So now the crowd has gone down drastically. Now, this seems to be part of this larger sense of fear that seems to have developed in Sekenita Kradi recently after the kidnapping of these three young women. Uh, tell mm -hmm. us again how the people are recovering after these kidnappings. Yes, Daniel, just as you said, so because of these um, three girls who have been kidnapped, the least um, noise um, being heard, people think that this is a kidnapping issue. And when someone even leaves home without informing the family, they end up reporting it as kidnapping. I understand that there has been over four to five cases of um, alleged kidnap cases after police went to investigate. They found out that these are all false. And then the police have sent these cases to court. I understand uh, these false um, kidnap cases are now in court and probably there will be a prosecution. Thank you, and Natalia Kwanza for those updates. Now, away from that issue, the Minister for Roads and Highways, Kwesia Mwakwata, has warned contractors on government's projects against shoddy work. He says those who breach terms of their work will have their contracts terminated. The minister sounded the warning on a working visit to inspect the ongoing road projects in Kumase. Nana Sentimenta has more in this report. 
The road minister's tour to project site in Kumase took him to Tere Junction as well as a Josu Kumasi corridor stretch of the main Kumasi Accra Road. Construction of the Tredda Junction Ahonju Runabout Road is expected to ease congestion on the main Bekwai Santasi stretch. Regional Feeder Roads Manager Edmond Kwekudiodu explains progress of work so far. The road is to the junction to Ahonju, and the total length of the road is 13 kilometers. The contractor has for now sealed it up to seven kilometers. It will take a lot of traffic from uh, Kumasi or Wasi Road, and it will take traffic tubes, the CBD. So those people who are also going to Accra, uh, it will relieve them of, it will relieve them of uh, so much congestion on that road, uh, Wasi Kumasi Road. So it's very, very, very important road that we have just constructed. constructed. It's a connection between the actually uh, to. Uh, Runabout. Executing contractor Kofi Job Construction is optimistic of meeting deadlines for completion of work. Obviously, this part of some of the challenges we face whilst we are constructing on roads. But I think even this the rain that happened last week, with God on our side, I think we still make it within the time that they given to us. How important is this project to you? Wow. You could see that this a project, majority of Kumasi people, they use this road. As you can see, a lot of the rich people in Kumasi are living in this area, and a whole, a whole lot of factories and industries also here. And this is the route they use. So if you're able to finish this route, it means going to boost some, it's even going to boost the economy because goods are going to travel in and then people are going to get their income. Mr. Kwesia Mwakwata re-emphasized good quality work to ensure the country's roads stand the test of time. It will not be tolerated in our country because we will not use one peso of national resources, the money belonging to the people of this country, to pay any contractor who does shoddy work. People of this country must have value for money. And I want to recommend you know, a project like this. I don't see why you cannot work day and night. Hmm? And you are an international man. You have traveled around the globe, around the world. Hmm? Well, we so, you, so you finish with you, you need to work during the days. You can still make the match targets. Yeah, but if, if you add the night element to it, you'll be able to finish uh, earlier. We are calling the machine in the night. You are, we are calling the Nana Asensu Mensa reporting. Coming up in business, inflation rates for the month of January declines to 9% from the December rate of 9.4. Daryl Kwao has the latest.